welcome to this very special episode on ET Now, titled GTL Infra Presents Future Is Now. In this age of connectivity, telecom infrastructure really forms the backbone for bridging the digital divide between urban and rural India. And with national telecom policy expecting or putting a target of connecting 70% rural Indians by 2017, there is a company, GTL Infra, that is at the forefront of ensuring this connectivity actually takes place. And we are joined by top key executives of uh, the company to help us understand their vision in how really will they achieve this target of connecting the poor and, of course, uh, talking about their growth strategies as well. Uh, we are joined by Mr. Charudat Naik, Director, GTL Infrastructure Limited. So thank you so much for speaking to us. My first question to you is help us understand the growth strategies that GTL uh, will look to to really tap uh, this booming market going forward. We find at this point of time, uh, the policy that government has put in together for telecom is far more conducive than what was for last 10 or 12 years. We have seen in field, uh, most of the operators trying to grow their BTSs, their other telecom equipments, which are related to call drops or even basic infrastructure. We find huge opportunities coming our way. We are in about 22 circles, that means almost all over India. And operators are growing in these areas. What we are trying to do at infrastructure level is that we are trying to improve our network availability. We are also trying to bring in energy sources which are cheaper and that can deliver cost effectiveness to our operators who overall they can deliver service which is better quality and I won't say cheaper but more cost effective to our their subscribers. Eventually we think in say 12 months from now Currently, we have about 45, 46,000 subscribers, mm -hmm. that is BTS Equipments, right. which will grow to about 60, 65,000, which is an ambitious target. And under the Digital India Forum, rural India is being targeted more specifically, wherein because of our independent structure, we are able to provide cost-effective solutions, we are able to provide point of service to our telecom operators, right. which gives our operators a chance to give effective services in rural India. So help us understand what would be the kind of strategies that you would look to really tap this market, uh, any specifics that you would like to share with us? I think what is driving uh, rural India strategy for us mm -hmm. is the ARPU that telecom operators are able to fetch in rural India is much lower than what can happen in urban area. Mm -hmm. Plus for data services to go through the application set that is currently available in marketplace is not re really uh, Conducive, pointed towards yeah. towards yeah. farmers or something. Mm. So first, we are also from our company side promoting a little bit of application development, which will help farmers, uh, rural communities, to use mobile phone as a good tool, with, which can compare itself with some bit of computing. Second, whenever we are delivering rural India services, we find power situation not great, where a lot of energy is uh, have to be produced by alternate sources. Right. Currently, diesel is being used uh, as mostly a backup service. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, tar industry is one of the largest consumers of diesel uh, in India. Isn't that correct? <laughs> it is correct from perspective yeah. that uh, numbers go that way. Yeah. But if you really see telecom as a, as a whole, mm -hmm. for its backup services, mm -hmm. if power is available, then di diesel is not required. It is the setup that we have currently in power situation yeah. Yeah. that is asking us to put diesel there. What we are trying to do is that we are in touch with a couple of technology leaders uh, from UK mm -hmm. who are able to provide us alternate way of producing power when we can take the DG generator set or diesel consumption substantially down. Mm -hmm. Once you do that, our ability to do business with telecom operators with lesser energy costs is feasible, which will eventually help telecom operators to provide uh, better service or better data service to the rural India which will help in increasing the penetration. There is a lot of expectation that data really will be the growth driver for Indian Telecom going forward. A lot of big players are focusing on 4G launches. Given that GTL Infra or TAR industry really is a derivative of the kind of growth that telecom companies will see, how bullish are you on data contributing as a growth driver for you? I'm very bullish. Uh, if you really look at American markets, mm -hmm where the entire growth for last about four years has happened on back of data services. You see some part of that is already India in India and in urban India. The telecom industry is now trying to use uh, a technology called Volti, uh, which is voice over LT, 
to make sure the voice conversations also happen on data side, yeah. which will be impetus uh, for all the telecom operators to focus more on data services. Right. So I do feel there is bigger opportunity for Indian telecom to provide data services, backed by applications, backed by Volti kind of uh, technology. Operators will focus on data services more than what they are done by now. And you know, if we were to look at, let's say, you know, 12 months, 18 months down the line, uh, with a lot of 4G launches probably being completed, uh, and yes. in fact, even Rel Geo also entering that space, hopefully in 18 months. How do you see uh, telecom landscape changing, and and how do you see that impacting uh, uh, the task? You shouldn't ask me. You should ask my daughter. Mm -hmm. That is much better to do because I definitely did not think that the current services are able to cope with the demand today. Mm -hmm. 3G networks, though there is good penetration now vis-a-vis -vis about 18, 24 months ago, but 4G networks will definitely change how data access is available to end user. Mm -hmm. And the availability of bandwidth will run in much, much better applications. If you see uh, some of the enterprise applications which use some bit of uh, data connectivity, they will grow once LTE, 4G kind of networks are there, which means an average employee will be able to fetch quite a lot of its applications from his computers in office and right. use it globally. Right. That, that's a big advantage. I think there's a big challenge in delivering such applications in India today. Right. I have met a couple of application providers who are willing to take this risk. Mm -hmm. They are talking to uh, big operators and I think there is a big future uh, in terms of how 4G is launched in India. But right. 4G future will depend on how app enterprise works, how video conferences become act active, how security services become active through the 4G networks. I think there's a big deal to work on. I understand that content is going to really be a big driver. But uh, as network investments increase, as uh, network enhancements need to be done by uh, uh, the telecom companies, uh, you know, how big a boost will that be uh, for yourself? I have seen all the press announcements. Mm -hmm. I have seen telcos talking about more than 100,000 BTSs to mm -hmm. come. I'm pretty excited. Mm -hmm. If this industry is going to see 100,000 BTSs to come up in whichever shape and size in the next 12 months, we are currently about 10% of India's total infrastructure provisioning people. I think we can get 12 or 13% of that. I see great opportunity for third party or independent tower companies like right. us because we are providing neutral platform. We have no agenda. Uh, we do not want any one operator to win. Uh, we also feel the revenue cycle that we have, we have provided a good sound base to telecom industry today to grow. I will not be surprised if we see 15, 20,000 subscribers or BTS is more on our network. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be end of the world. I believe if 4G is really practical and if people get beyond content of entertainment and into real world office applications quicker, you will see far better growth than what we have seen as of now. Right. You mentioned that, you know, uh, third party vendors uh, typically are neutral. Yes. Are we clearly moving towards that situation or, or that uh, phenomena where uh, uh, captive uh, uh, tower units do not make that much sense going forward and third party vendors have an advantage? No, I don't think we are at that stage today. Mm -hmm. There are very few third party or independent companies like us mm -hmm. uh, who are really truly neutral and independent. Uh, it's very heartening to see American Towers trying to do a YM deal right. and trying to establish or put the cause forward. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's it's anyway going to affect people like Bharti Infratel or Indus in changing their gear. Mm -hmm. As a whole, industry will have players backed by operators and backed by independent players. It's very long run uh, that one has to really discount to see who wins. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I want to make a, such a future statement today. Right. I was going to come to that uh, ATC Vyom deal. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that, that is one of the biggest deals that have happened in the TAR space. ATC is a very formidable player in this uh, space. How do you see the landscape changing with, with, an, with an aggressive ATC in the business as well? I think ATC uh, is doing a great job. They are trying to establish uh, or reinforce the model that independent infrastructure companies can provide a very good platform. Uh, Viome is still backed by Tata Tele Services to, to, to an extent, mm -hmm. but I think with management in ATC's hand, they will become independent. As they grow, and specifically with American funding or the kind of, of 
formidable balance sheet that they have got. They have a long, long role to play in the in, uh, infrastructure provision in, in India. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be challenging for them because they are current at about 10-12 thousand right. towers. They have suddenly gone and become 60 thousand. Right. There is going to be challenge for them. Integration challenges. There is going to be challenge for them for a year or so. Mm -hmm. We ourselves went to the challenge when we bought ourselves uh, 22,000 towers mm -hmm. and we know what it takes to really maneuver such a large investment and such a large portfolio and be efficient. Mm -hmm. So I think for uh, American towers, it is 24 months, very criti critical for them to come to a point where they will become really efficient and then start playing good game. I don't think they should play a game of just more BTSs on the network. Okay. One question I want to ask, there are a lot of consumers in India definitely are uh, wanting to know of that, you know, a lot of people in the industry feel or at least the telecom companies are saying that call drops happen because there are not enough towers. Do you agree with that argument or do you think that's just too simplistic an assessment of a complex problem? No, I, I really have to think and tell you this because I don't think it's only infrastructure which is tower infrastructure which is causing call drops. There are other infrastructural issues. The BTSs that you have, availability of spectrum to operators, uh, also quite a, quite a few times how operators have organized their network does affect the call drop. But if you ask me on the other side, that do I think that amount of towers available in this country are more or less, then I would say they are less, mm -hmm. definitely less. We need at least 30% more tower to cover what we have. That more so when you are going to use data services. Right. Integration uh, of those data services will require far more towers in this country than what we have. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we are able to see far better tenancy for last 12 months in our infrastructure. Right. And we are bullish that another 12, 24 months we'll see the same thing. Which clearly means that infrastructure availability is, is a constraint that telecom industry is facing. But for call drops, we are not the only reason, I must say that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so it's, it's not something as simple as that. It's not simple. Fair enough. One last question before we wrap this up. Uh, you know, a lot of times people talk about how the tar industry is contributing to the uh, greenhouse emission and that is something that needs to be talked uh, controlled at some level. Do you think that the industry faces a challenge of balancing commercial interests along with balancing environmental concerns? No, first, uh, let me accept that the DG sets that we use does contribute to pollution. Uh, there is no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But today there is a technology limitation in terms of whether you can avoid a DG or you cannot avoid a DG. Ta tower industry also faces a lot of vandalizing because of diesel being used can be used for some other purpose and people do steal diesel from the tower industry, and which is a real, real pain. But alternate technologies like solar panel, we have implemented solar panel in about 500 sites. Our experience is that it's not 100% reliable. The capacity building takes a lot of space. So it's not a really great solution, though I think as a tower industry, a lot of people have done that. Then we have tried the battery technologies, which are helping. But again, they are not fully reliable. Uh, they do not contribute to being third source, which is required at the tower site. We are also experimenting with hydrogen fuel, uh, which is uh, a technology which is being implemented now in the country, where a hydrogen fuel cell will be brought to a ground-based tower and it will provide good electricity, uh, can take about 24 hours of support. What experiment we have done, we have done in about 10 sites. We have generated more than about 2 megawatts of power there. Uh, we have seen that 99.95% SLAs are being able to achieve there. But worry is that the hydrogen fuel cell per se is expensive and we don't think this price is going to come down easily. So though we appreciate the, the damage that can happen to the environment, we are not finding a right telecom related solution at this point of time. We are hoping in another 24, 25, 26 months, this hydrogen fuel cell technology will come to India. Uh, they will possibly even manufacture in India and we will have a good solution. Right. We'll take a very short break. On the other side, we're joined by Mr. Milin Nayak, whole time director and chief operating officer of GTL Infrastructure, sharing with us his vision as far as the future growth of the company is concerned. And the all new Ford Endeavor, designed for any terrain. Engineered for the extraordinary. The all-new Ford Endeavor, designed for any terrain. 
engineered for the extraordinary. Our best innovations in our most capable SUV. The all-new Ford Endeavor. In this world of increasing challenges and complex regulatory landscape, how can we deliver value and wild influence in today's destructive environment? Presenting Gen Next 2016 Council Congress and the Legal Era Awards, a platform where all imperative and corporate legal key issues will be addressed. 20 plus countries participating. Join the debate on the 3rd, 4th and 5th of March 2016 at the Taj Lands End, Mumbai. Brought to you by India's number one magazine on business and legal world, Legal Era. By the people, for the people, of the people. If we are with the truth, then we have to win the truth. Bangosit celebrates the spirit of heroism in Ghayal once again. Hello and welcome to this very special episode of GTL Infa Presents Future Is Now. We are now joined by uh, Mr. Milan Nayak, whole time director and COO of GTL Infra, speaking to ET now. Uh, Mr. Nayak, thank you so much for taking out the time. My first question to you is uh, one of the biggest policy decisions that the government took uh, recently was that of uh, allowing spectrum trading and sharing. Now, how does spectrum sharing and trading arrangements between telecom companies impact tower companies like yourself? As I understand, currently spectrum trading is limited to intra-band only. And that too with some spectrum norms. So the impact would not be much. However, if the telcos are given more freedom, then it would definitely impact our ability to bring in more tenancies. I think ideally each telco would like to utilize its spectrum to gain more and more market share rather than sharing it with its competitors. That's a fair point. Uh, if we were to really talk about growth strategies that GTL infrastructure has identified, uh, what according to you are the top two or three growth strategies that the company will follow uh, in the near term uh, uh, going forward? Uh, we have observed large number of subscribers who are today using smartphones both in rural and semi-urban areas. Due to this, the consumption of data in addition to voice has increased significantly. Of course the telcos have also realized this and therefore they have started rolling out their 3G and 4G services. You see we have a very really large network spread across Pan India from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. In fact we are offering our infrastructure to telcos so that they can leverage our infrastructure and roll out their plans ASAP. Uh, we, we, are, we are proud to say that today almost all telcos in India are currently connected to our network. We are striving very hard to ensure that we give, give them the maximum uptime that they desire. We are also moving forward going to work towards giving them 99.99% uptime, 24 by 7, 365 days. Our this approach has helped us in a very big way and we have seen a significant increase in our tenancies. Eventually, our tenancy ratios have also improved dramatically. Do you anticipate more competition in this space now that ATC has also become fairly active and fairly aggressive in this space? Do you expect a lot more competition in the tower business going forward, maybe more MNCs also coming in. Uh, is that a fair possibility? Uh, the tower market is saturated. Towers are spread across length and breadth in our country. Not much towers are getting built nowadays. The focus is to increase tenancies on these towers and thereby gain from it. In such a situation, I don't see any more competition or any new players jumping in the fray. Yes, 
there might be a consolidation going forward. Mr. Nayak, one of the biggest uh, uh, issues that we talk about right now is around uh, environmental concerns. Uh, that you know how tower companies emit a lot of uh, uh, carbon dioxide and some of the other uh, greenhouse gases. As as a leading tower company, how do you balance the environmental concerns along with commercial concerns as well? Uh, uh, that you need to, of course, uh, take care of. So is the balancing act very difficult? How do you do it? Very, very tough, according to me. Let us first accept the fact that our country still faces power outages in the rural as well as urban areas. On the other hand, the telcos are demanding 99.99% of the uptime. There is no option but to run DG sets eventually we have to face various environmental issues. However, to balance such a situation, we have undertaken certain steps on a top priority basis. Like a ASAP connect off-grid sites to grid sites, thereby avoid DG usage. B ASAP connect partially grid sites with Backups like uh, QRS batteries, lithium ion batteries, deep discharge batteries to ensure that we avoid using DGs. Our basic objective is to eliminate DG usage in total. So one of the biggest and the most ambitious programs of the government right now is Digital India. But if you look at it, the telecom infrastructure is the backbone of carrying out the Digital India campaign. How critical is the, the, the telecom infrastructure for uh, rolling out and completion of uh, Digital India campaign? Telecom is very critical in the entire Digital India mission. We understand in the next couple of years, the government would like to connect each and every citizen of the country through Aadhaar number and mobile number to gain access to all governmental services. Currently, we are close to 300 million people using internet via their smartphones or their tabs. The government's aim is to take this number close to 500 million in next two years. And this will be possible only with the availability of a good telecom network in the most remotest of the country. Sir, help us understand what are the key corporate social responsibility initiatives and programs uh, uh, that are being run by GTL infrastructure. You see, Global Foundation is the CSR arm of Global Group. This foundation is currently engaged in health, education, disability and community development. In the field of education, the foundation imparts computer education in rural areas through their program called Knowledge on Wheels. In the field of disability, the foundation has come out with an advanced lab to impart education to visually impaired people so that their job prospects are enhanced. On the community development, the foundation has constructed a school in Alibag in the state of Maharashtra. So one very important uh, element in the entire uh, uh, operations, of course, is technology. That is clearly the backbone of the entire operations. So help us understand how do you uh, leverage technology to, of course, make your operations that much more efficient. Availability of uninterrupted EB power is still a major concern in our country, especially in the rural areas. More and more telcos are encouraging to go on outdoor BTS rather than indoor BTS. This is required to minimize the energy demand. New technology products like fuel cells or natural cooling devices or deep discharge batteries or QRS batteries or something called lithium ion batteries are being introduced 
and deployed in the market. Now, what according to you are the top three concerns that face uh, uh, tar companies right now? Power is an important factor over here. For a site to run 24 by 7, power is required. And because of non-availability of power 24 by 7, you know, the network usually goes down and this causes a huge interruption and outages. Now this is one concern, power is one concern. Another concern is there are a lot of statutory issues coming out, you know, in the country. You know, towers are um, uh, likely to be defined as a building and therefore as a building it attracts property tax. Now all this has become a cost issue which was not factored earlier. It has now been factored. So this is another concern that we have. And of course, uh, Everyone expects consolidation, so there is an element of uncertainty, you know, what is going to happen, like operators are, you know, talking to each other for consolidation, even IP providers like us, they are also in the process of consolidation. So this is another concern for a company like us. Fair enough, sir. Mr. Nayak, my one final question to you is, uh, you have listed out the concerns that exist. Uh, there is a huge growth opportunity and potential as well for the sector. Uh, but give, help us understand the kind of investments that uh, uh, GTL infrastructure would be putting in into the business going forward to really uh, realize uh, uh, those growth uh, uh, strategies that you've listed for us. You see, running such a huge network of this kind of magnitude which runs from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and covers the entire country, north, south, east, west, huge amount of money requires to be pumped in on maintenance of the network. And we have been doing it and we will continue to do that because our endure is to give 99.99% of our uptime to all our valued customers and we will continue to do that. Right, Mr. Nayak, thank you so much for taking out the time. That brings us to an end of this very special episode of GTL Infrastructure Presents Future is Now.